Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg to move that leave be given to bring in a bill to make provision on the controls on the transportation of nuclear weapons. I would also like to take this opportunity to call on the government to immediately clarify what safety measures they have put in place, but ultimately to put a stop to these convoys travelling through our towns and cities. It would also be my hope that aware, through awareness in this House eh, of these convoys, this will strengthen calls across the country eh, to rid us of nuclear weapons once and for all. Yeah. On several occasions since my election last May, nuclear convoys have passed through my constituency of Midlothian. Along busy routes with commuters and families, these convoys pass with no regard to the danger it poses to the people of Midlothian, and my constituents were horrified, and understandably so. As some of you will know, Midlothian is a semi-rural constituency, immediately south of Edinburgh, sitting at the foot of the Pentland Hills. Pennycook is one of Midlothian's largest towns, and that's where we'd find the Glencorse Barracks, with Beeslack High School and Morriswood Primary in close proximity. So you can just imagine the scene. It's lunchtime on a bright May afternoon. The children from Morriswood Primary are playing in the school playfields, and the pupils at Beeslack High School are out enjoying their lunch, while just over the fence sit half a dozen weapons of mass destruction. Since then, there have been countless reported incidents where convoys have continued to travel across the UK, regardless of severe weather warnings, with the most recent instance only last weekend in Stirling. We have a number of areas of the country suffering flooding, others under snow. Emergency services are pushed. Roads and rail infrastructure are challenged almost to breaking point, yet still these convoys make their trek up and down our countries. Following the public outcry in Midlothian on 22nd of May, I wrote to the Secretary of Defence to ask a number of questions on the safety, including what assessment was made of the proposed route. The answer that was provided to me, I have to say, Mr. Speaker, was woefully inadequate. Uh, the response from the Minister claimed an unbroken safety record for 50 years. I have to say, Mr Speaker, the response I received could almost have been written by Frank Drebin in the police squad and said nothing more than, nothing to see here, move along. In actual fact, there have been more than 70 individual safety incidents involving convoys recorded by the Ministry of Defence over the period from July 2007 to December 2012. These figures provided to me uh, by Nukewatch, uh, an organisation who helped to monitor the, the movement of these convoys, figures that had been provided to them by the Ministry of Defence. Alarmingly, the movement of convoys has also changed. In 2005, MOD rules restricting travel by night were lifted. Moving convoys by night increases the risk of accidents and collisions and makes security much more difficult. The Royal Society for Prevention of Accidents has pointed out drivers are far more likely to fall asleep at the wheel at night. Long journeys now take less than 20 hours, adding pressure to the crews and safety-critical equipment while families sleep in their beds. At a time in this House, Mr Speaker, when we attend daily to see the UK threat level remains severe, these convoys are dangerous, highly visible and not only a risk to the level of accidents, but they are a moving target for terrorists. Mr Speaker, some might claim this is being alarmist, but it has been said that such an attack has the potential to lead to the damage or destruction of a nuclear weapon within the UK, and the consequences of such an incident are likely be to, con to be considerable loss of life, severe disruption to the British people's way of life, and the UK's ability to function effectively as a sovereign state. These are not my words, Mr Speaker. These are words from the Ministry of Defence in a response to a Freedom of Information request again to Newquatch in 2005. Just think about that. Considerable loss of life and inability to function as a sovereign state. Yeah, that's right. If you still think it's a good idea to have these convoys moving across our country when that is the potential consequences, Feel free to do so. I certainly don't. Here, 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 here. Given the enormity in these words, we must ask ourselves, are nuclear convoys more of a risk to the British people and their way of life than terrorism? And if that is the case, then we have a moral, ethical and valid compelling mandate 
to remove that risk from our towns, our cities and our nations. We only have to look at the effects of social media to understand how powerful the risk is. When convoys travelled through Midlothian, I was alerted to this through Facebook and Twitter. Ordinary members of public pointing out the grim scene of nuclear materials passing the front door. It is frankly delusional to think that a convoy of 20 large vehicles can ever go unnoticed in this day and age. The convoys are already well documented, and if members of the public are able to do so, it seems logical to assume others with darker motivations could also do so. I am sure we are all too far, well too far aware, aware of the appalling damage and the loss of life a terrorist attack can result in. But running convoys of nuclear weapons through the country does nothing to deter that. If an incident of that kind should occur, or if there was a, a fire or a major explosion, members should be aware that local authorities may not be fully prepared to deal with the immediate aftermath. Whilst police are informed of an approaching convoy, there is no obligation to inform any other service, including the Fire and Rescue Service. So in this scenario, something has happened. You have lethal plutonium billowing around your constituency. Local people at the mercy of a response team based in Bath, well, I'm sure they are highly skilled and carry considerable expertise. They're still 380 miles from my constituency. Oh, that's right. At worst, if there was a fire or major explosion, my constituency and neighbouring areas would be flattened. Mr Speaker, you might be aware this is not the first time this issue has been raised in this House. My hon. Friend, the member for Rutherglen and Hamilton West, raised many of these points in a debate in this House back in July. But this is not just an issue being raised by the SNP. And I, I would like to thank the hon. Member for South Down for uh, contacting with her support for this 10-minute uh, yeah. rule bill. Because in addition to the 21 councils in Scotland that these convoys pass through, they also pass through or fly over 13 local authorities in Wales and 91 in England. This is not just an issue for Scotland. As this House looks to the potential vote on overhauling and upgrading of the system through the MK4 refurbishment programme, the Government should also be clear about how the programme will impact on the frequency of convoys. Replacing every single warhead and sending every single one down to Berkshire and back again Madam Deputy Speaker, I can only imagine the scene. You are standing on a street corner, you are observing the passing of uh, military vehicles. Some are guarding, some are carrying nuclear weapons. You are not in North Korea. Mm. You are standing in the A702 in Pennycook. Aye, that's right. The last point I wish to make before I conclude is an issue of great importance, and that is to praise the hard work of the men and women who work in the submarines on part of the logistical operation. They do an incredible job, and it can't be forgotten that, regardless of our views on nuclear weapons, the men and women who work with them are doing a phenomenal job. While I believe the majority of people of Scotland, indeed the people of my own constituency in Midlothian, remain opposed to the UK Government's policy of maintaining and upgrading the Trident system, I hope this debate can persuade other members, even if they agree with a pro-Trident policy, they must show their concern and agree there are real risks involved in these nuclear convoys. The transport of nuclear material weapons should not be based on an argument of convenience at the expense of safety. The policy as it stands lacks transparency. It is counterproductive against protecting us from terrorist attacks and shows a blatant disregard and lack of judgment against our own citizens. Madam Deputy Speaker, while my ultimate hope would be for the government to see sense and think again on their policy to renew Trident, at the very least, we should answer honourable members' calls to end this absurd policy of driving nuclear weapons material near our schools, nurseries, and our front doors. Yeah. 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 The question is that the honourable member have leave to bring in the bill. John Woodcock. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Uh, in my constituency of Barrow and Furness. And in fact, in, in the, the house in which I, I live in it, we are uh, periodically given uh, warning notices of what to do in the, in the event of a, of a, uh, of a nuclear incident. Uh, there has been uh, iodine tablet, tablets which are, which are given out uh, in, 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 case of such a, um, in case of such an incident. But I think the difference, 
I, mean, I, I would say the difference between people in Barrow and Furness and, and, the peop- and his constituents in Scotland, but that isn't the case. It's a peop- the difference between the people of Barrow and Furness and those members who sit on the SNP benches is that they have a, a mature understanding that actually the regulatory, the, the regulatory governance structure is, des- is internationally uh, overseen and is designed to keep people safe. In addition to the live nuclear reactors which are maintained within the submarines in Barron Furnace a few hundred yards from my house without incident or the kind of paranoid scaremongering which has been deliberately whipped up by the member. Yeah, actually, the, way, the, um, the, the south and the west coast of, of Cumbria has taken by rail in the manner which he is trying to frighten school children and nursery children. I really think he ought to know better. Um, there are um, the, the, those are taken by rail nuclear nuclear material which is done absolutely safe i mean he must know if he's done any kind of research so this idea that you that there is a sudden derailment and then suddenly <coughs> the whole of scotland is filled by this cloud of plutonium and everyone puts gas masks on and dies it's just complete fantasy it is fantasy just designed not actually to achieve a greater level of safety for his constituents it's to it's just to add fuel to the fire of their absurd argument, which is, Madam Deputy Speaker, in case you have in case you have forgotten this, it is that we believe in nuclear weapons. We we the SNP want Scotland to be protected by nuclear weapons under the NATO umbrella. But we are but but we are we actually think those nuclear weapons are immoral and they are abhorrent and they must come come nowhere near Scotland. I mean they can be what, say, 50, 100 miles down the road in Bower and Furness, if you like, and they can keep all of us safe, but we don't want any of them on our shores. And frankly, to hear the Honourable Member patting submarine, mem- uh, s- submarine members on the head, saying to those crews, saying to those people who maintain a build of submarines, we have the utmost respect. Well, what rubbish, what absolute rubbish, when actually you would cause thousands and thousands of them to lose their jobs, uh, uh, n- never, never to, be, uh, to return on, on Scottish soil. So I, I would say, Madam Deputy Speaker, above the, the, the hubbub of the Scottish members who are trying to distract me, that this, the, the, their 10-minute rule but is nothing to do with safety. It's all to do with prosecuting their absurd argument, which actually is not supported by the people of Scotland. Uh, actually, the, actually, every opinion poll, every opinion poll, bar the one done by c and I'll give them that, they've got c and with them, every other opinion poll has made clear that the Scottish people, like the rest of the United Kingdom, are in favour of maintaining an independent nuclear deterrent, deterrent while other countries have them. This bill won't get it anywhere, Madam Deputy Speaker, so I don't seek to trouble the House with a division, given the important business that we need to get on to regarding psychoactive substances. I just want people to know, for the record, what utter poppycock it is, uh, and, uh, and that it really should be paid no regard. That the Honourable Member have leave to bring in the bill. As many as are of that opinion say aye. aye. Of the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. <coughs> Who will prepare and bring in the bill? Brendan O'Hara, Douglas Chapman, Kirsten Oswald, Carol Monaghan, Martin John Doherty, Mike Weir, Stephen Patterson, Drew Henry, Alex Salmond, Pete Wisher, Margaret Ferrier, and myself. Here, here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Owen Thompson. (coughs) Transport of nuclear weapons bill. Second reading what day? Friday the 4th of March. Friday the 4th of March. 
The clerk will now proceed to read the orders of the day.